eyes are loaded. Everybody rolls with their fingers crossed. Everybody knows the war is over. Everybody knows the good guys lost. Everybody knows. Okay, hey, we're back. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show a, uh, a demonstration of how to use bentonite to clear your wine. This is actually uh, it's a Sutter Home bottle, but this is the cider we made in a super simple first video. And uh, this is the bentonite we talked about in the, um, uh, the last video I posted on uh, winemaking advanced uh, uh, chemicals and equipment. This is going to clear this wine, and I chose this bottle because you can see when I wave my hand across here, you can see through it, you can see a shadow, but you can't really see, it. it's not very clear, and that's going to affect our taste. The clearer this is, generally the, um, the clearer our taste is going to be, or our, uh, the, the more... Uh okay, so this is not very clear at the moment. Um, the, um, the reason it's not very clear is because there's still suspended solids uh, in the wine. We need to get those out because those are affecting our taste. Um, I'm going to, uh, if you recall from the first video, the key here is to have cool wine, and this is very cool. It's been in the fridge. It's been chilled. Our apartment is fairly cool, and uh, we need to mix this stuff up. The directions say to um, mix it up and let it sit overnight. We don't have to do that. Uh, but we are going to use very, very hot water, and we're going to pour this into there. So I've set it up so that uh, you can see the mix process and everything. It's just a simple glass jug. Got that open. And this came directly off the kettle, so it's still going to be really steaming. I'm just going to mix just enough of it up for this to fit just in this headspace. Uh, right here, you can't see on the camera, but to fit in the headspace here. And it'll get really, really cloudy, and uh, I'll show you uh, time lapse a couple of times to figure out, uh, or so you can see what's going on. So I've got a measure of this stuff, and I'm just mixing up a very small amount, so I'm not going to mix most or uh, mix much of this up. Normally, this is designed to, to work on a five gallon batch scale, but uh, that doesn't really work at the moment for these videos. Move that out of the way. So we have our really hot water. We have the bentonite in there. I've got a little egg beater. I'm gonna mix it up. Mix it up really well, and I can see that it, from the bottom, it's all mixed. There's none hanging around on the bottom. So now I got to get this into here. Let me adjust the camera real quick. I'm gonna pull this top off real quick. And I'm actually going to pour this into this bendable plastic container just because it's easier to pour. Let's see. This is really where you need your funnels, but uh, I don't have access to mine. So you might be able to tell in the video this is getting really cloudy again, but that's what we want at this stage. So I've got that up there. I've got it full again. I'm going to mix this a bit. And again, this is a really small demo. This should be on five gallons. And it looks, it actually, it is cloudier than it was, but we got to let the vent night do its stuff, and uh, we'll come back and look at it here in a bit. Okay, here we're back. This is actually a um, about two weeks later. It's one of the great things I love about um, doing uh, uh, home brewing stuff is you can really do this stuff on your own schedule. You don't have to rush anything. I meant to do this about 24 hours later, but I haven't gotten around to it, so um, this is what we got so far. This is the same bottle that's been sitting up right there on my aquarium, or next to my aquarium for a while. And see now, compared, you can actually see my fingertip through this bottle. That's how much clearer this is now. Now, normally I'll actually take a ruler, and when I can read the ruler through the, the bottle, uh, this particular bottle, I know that's about as clear as I want. But I want to show you this. You see all that nastiness down there in the bottom? That's the bentonite and everything else that was suspended in the wine. 
So basically what we want to do is we want to get the good stuff here and leave the bad stuff. So what I'm going to do is I have a, a really high tech, or high tech um, brewing equipment here in the name of a, a vinyl hose. It's very small length just for doing single bottles like that. And my other high tech tool is a towel and of course my sanitizer. This is the same sanitizer I mixed up a while back so it's still good. So what I'm going to do first of all is I want to run sanitizer through my hose. Now I don't want to drink this. I'm going to siphon it off but I don't want to drink this stuff because it's nasty so I'm going to wait until the, the stuff gets about right here and I'll stop and then I'll run it through. Okay. So I've got sanitizer in the hose right now. So what I'm going to do is pull this out. Sanitizer's already run through that part of the hose. I'm going to actually invert the hose, make the sanitizer run through all that stuff, and then back into my jug. So now the entire inside of my hose has been sanitized. <clears throat> now I need to do the outside. That's where the towel comes in. I'm going to pour a liberal amount of sanitizer on my towel and I'm just going to run it through just like that. It's contact sanitizer now. I have a perfectly sanitized length of tubing to do this with. So I'm going to put this up. And I have the old uh, Mountain Lightning bottle, a two liter bottle, um, that I had previously sanitized before the video. I'm going to open that and we're going to take this and put it in that. Now anybody who's still in gasoline knows exactly how this is done. Alright, <clears throat> so can't show much of this on camera, but I'll show what I can. So this goes in here like that and that's all the way up to the top so what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to have to start to siphon uh, manually I'm just going to suck on the hose just a bit and when that starts going down I'm going to shove that down but I never ever want to let this let the end of this hose get down here to this gunk because I'm going to leave the gunk in the bottle and the rest of it is going to go in here which I have to put lower down below the desk so here we go there we go. And as you can see, that is being siphoned off. Let's see if you can get the hose. Can you see the hose in there? The hose is well above the gunk. I'm leaving the gunk. I'm going to tilt the bottle ever so slightly. That's enough. Now, I did get a little bit of that, but this is not, no, I'm not trying to do it for the camera. That's all the gunk, yuck, nasty yeast poop and bentonite clay. And now we have our crystal clear, ready to be drink, drunk wine. It's clear, it smells much better because you don't have all that putrefied uh, fruit hanging out. And now I'm going to go rinse this out in the sink here in a bit and we will be done. Um, so that's how you use bentonite to clarify wine. You can bentonite, uh, can, or you can also use other finding agents like uh, sparkboard that I talked about earlier, but uh, bentonite is my favorite to use. And again, the secret to using bentonite is you have molten hot bentonite and cool wine, and that temperature difference makes it much, much more effective. And um, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if uh, anybody has any questions, and I'll be more than happy to, to try to oblige you. Okay? Everybody have a great night.